name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we are now in the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Lord Jesus always invites us not to complain with our crosses. Bear the crosses with one another, because friends, families, who will always be willing to share the cross. It will lighten the load. And there's wisdom behind carrying the cross because we take on, as well, the cross of Christ. Let us ask God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet 
Jeremiah. You duped me, Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out, violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then, it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. May their sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Do you have crosses that are so heavy to carry right now? What are crosses in life? Are these sufferings, pains, tribulations, challenges in life? And we know as we face still this pandemic, this is a very clear indication that cross is really close to us. The virus is a cross. The sufferings that we have brought about by this virus could be daunting and too much for all of us. And we sometimes give up easily if we don't have faith in Jesus, if we don't hang on, say, Lord, this is just a little portion of your suffering. Can you grant me the grace to be able to carry such crosses that you bore in the first place? And we are just having this simple, little, or ordinary cross compared to yours. I'd like to tell you a story. One day after the Mass, this lady approached me and asked, Father, what did you say to my husband? So I asked her, why? What happened? So after the husband went back to his house, after his confession in the church, all suddenly the husband carried his wife. To her surprise, she asked, her husband, why? What, what happened? Is there something special? It is not my birthday today. This is not our anniversary either. Why are you carrying me? So the husband said, you know what? This gentle priest that I met in the church after my confession required me as a form of penance. He said, carry your cross. Okay, I don't know if the reverse thing would happen. Can wives carry your husbands? I think you will not do it. <laughs> you know, this is only an illustration. But somehow, we could be a potential heavy load to somebody's life. And we know we have to check, am I across to my mom, to my father, to my children? or to anybody, because it is not only coming from our life. You know, life, when the gospel is telling us, deny your life for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of Christ, life as defined in the New Testament and the dictionary that we know, it is not only human soul or mind or spirit, but it's also defined as the true self. Let us discover once again according to our readings for this Sunday, what are crosses in life and how should we deal with these crosses? And the gospel says it's right. It has a complete illustration that somehow Jesus would tell us it is part and parcel of life. We cannot do about 
discarding or removing the crosses around us because it is part of life. According to Pope Benedict XVI in his Theology of the Cross, before his general audience, he said, the cross is a stumbling block in a folly that lie in the very fact that where there seems to be nothing but failure, sorrow and defeat, there is the full power of God's boundless love. For the cross is an expression of love, and love is a true power that is revealed precisely in this seeming weakness. For the Jews, the cross is scandalon or scandal, that is, a snare or a stumbling block. It seems to hinder the faith of the devout Israelite who finds it difficult to discover anything like it in the sacred scriptures. Paul, in the second reading, exhorts the Romans not to conform themselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of their mind that they may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. We know that the cross that we are referring to is not only a symbol that we keep. I, by the way, who are wearing crosses here, pendants or maybe a symbol somewhere in your purses to remind you of the greatest symbol of Christianity, which is cross. Do you have a cross somewhere in your hand, in the rosary that you carry? Yes, the church has a big cross inside. And you know what? If the cross is not only for display purposes, because some would make it just like an exhibition of who they are before the public eye. But you know the crosses in China in particular are being destroyed, taken away from the churches because it has always been a symbol of scandal. They cannot really take it and accept it. It's too much for them to see the cross, which is the powerful symbol of our Christian life. We are called to the offer our lives and our sacrifices as a spiritual worship in union with Christ, who sacrificed himself on the cross for the expiation of our sins. The saints and the martyrs of the church have something in common and made them ambassadors and soldiers of Christ. In the frescoes, in the catacombs, in the first art symbols, or maybe depiction of the relationship with one another, cross had been common sight and a sight that would identify whoever passes away or a street or a corner of a, or a building. If you see a cross in the early Christian times, Christianity was really evident. They offered their lives for the cause of Christ. And that is something that we should always consider. I am carrying my own cross. I am taking on the cross of Christ. They bore the struggles, these martyrs and saints, the pains, the betrayal, shame, agony, persecution, and death as their powerful yet humble testimonies of their unwavering faith and hope for the sake of Christ. It was a scandal to their multitude of witnesses. But those who accepted and believed their cause because their imitators and faithful followers of Christ. Indeed, our crosses or sufferings in this world without Christ are merely burdens to carry, but the cross, whether light or heavy, that we carry with Christ becomes a sacrifice. A cross without Christ is nothing but a cross, a symbol, but the cross with Christ, the crucifix, is a sacrifice. In the Eucharistic sacrifice, or during the Mass that we have this afternoon, we unite our worship with the Lord's perfect sacramental offering of his life to the Father in a non-bloody manner, commemorating what he offered in a bloody manner on Calvary. The Holy Mass, my dear brothers and sisters, is the highest of all prayers and the supreme acts of worship. We gather as a living, loving, and faithful community, bringing humbly all our concerns, trials, problems, our crosses, and sacrifices in union with Christ's own sacrifice, so that they will be transformed as a source of sanctifying grace, encouragement, 
and hope in this world that denies, rejects, or debases the salvific meaning, divine necessity, and heavenly plan of God for humanity. I'm sure to say this, even without you saying it to me, my dear brothers and sisters, some of your family members, especially the senior ones, the old ones who are highly susceptible of the virus, you will be caring enough for these people and say, it's okay if you cannot go to Resurrection Church this afternoon. Yes, mom, yes, dad, but I will bring with you your petitions, your intentions, and you suffer greatly here. It is a big sacrifice on your part because you will brave the challenges and say, Lord, I need you before anything else. I want to receive you. I am representing my family here, the community, and all over the world who might not be coming to the church because of this difficulty. I'm sure God is pleased. I know that because we share the suffering of our brothers and sisters here at this very moment. So when you go and attend the Mass, it's just a matter of attendance, compliance, or duty. It is your deep love for the Eucharist for Jesus and saying, Lord, I offer my life together with the lives of those suffering. And here we are, my dear friends, collectively in unity with our brothers and sisters. We behold, we magnify, we honor and glorify Jesus, the one who will sustain us as we carry the cross. And that is something that we should always remember. You come here for something, and that is something very special, something very honorable, and God will truly be happy and say, see my children, despite of their crosses, they come to celebrate this biggest, loving, and all-encompassing sacrament that they need. And for sure, when you go back to your homes, the children, the old folks will smile. How was it? Did you pray for me? Did you care to remember the people whom you have promised to pray for? And they will say thank you. In that sense, we are one with them. The world tries to shift our minds away from the cross, but the cross is the true path of life and happiness. Each one with a pure intention regarding his or her cross will always find consolation and meaning that the cross has a redemptive value and it will not be too heavy that the grace of God cannot be provided. In every cross, there is always a grace. The next time we attend the Mass or on each Mass, we are not only participating for the sake of attendance or a Sunday duty or a family tradition, we come here to partake Christ's suffering, to offer our broken lives, to submit to God's will, to be like Christ, embracing the cross, and to love our neighbors, our brothers and sisters, the way Jesus loves them. Accepting the crosses in our life renews our attitude toward the temporary and fleeting things of this world and what is profoundly important. Whether we want it or not, the cross is a part of our life what matters is how we face it and why we face it. Our present generation and milieu have become success-driven, highly competitive and complicated, and becoming too secularistic that many would settle for quick fix and try to spare themselves from necessary sacrifices, if not remove in their lives obstacles to their own brand of success and fulfillment which oftentimes measured in how much they earn, find comfort, and be totally in charge of their lives. Many lost that sense of sacrifice in the value of hard work with social responsibility. Sadly, in our world that we have reached unparalleled degree of economic development and advancements, the accumulation of things and selfish ambitions and promotion just to ensure comfort and wealth are given priority, while the development of the integrity of the human person as a child of God, sharing the same dignity with all the rest, regardless of status, educational background, ethnicity, and cultural differences, are not given due reverence and honor, when huge sacrifices and toil have to be infused to uplift that sense of justice, freedom, 
and love for what is honorable and true. If we only want a life which does not involve self-denial in the cross, a life which we can own everything we could want, there is no satisfaction or contentment. There will be always no real peace and pure joy. If we only seek security, comfort, and control, and to crave for more money and earthly desires, which are temporary and fleeting, there will always be things beyond our control. Sickness could happen to anybody, financial bankruptcy even to the richest man, pain of loss due to death and tragedy, heartaches could haunt broken relationships, and so on and so forth. Only the Lord could remind us today that we can have the whole world but not possess what is truly important, an enduring and fulfilling life. According to Father Paul O'Sullivan, OP, he identified five elements in suffering or sufferings. Sufferings or crosses come from God for our benefit. Sometimes we need just to say, thank you, Lord, for this cross. The last advice, you know what, during counseling and spiritual direction, if I have nothing anymore to say to the penitent and to the counselee, I would rather say, God gave you a cross, and you'll never be alone when you're carrying that cross because Jesus is with you. Just carrying your cross. And that's my, the person would smile and say, thank you, Father, for reminding me. Because after all, crosses are beneficial. There are blessings. Problems are blessings in disguise. And you become stronger and pure in your intention. If you have the courage just to say, yes, God will truly ease my burdens with the grace that he could provide. My effort will never be enough. It has always been in vain without the help of my Father. Second, being in the state of grace, we derive immense merit from every suffering born patiently, even the little sufferings of our daily lives. What does crosses teach us? Patience, humility, understanding, and obedience. Because without the crosses, we seem to be self-sufficient. We seem not to need God anymore. We seem to be comfortable. So sometimes God allows us to be uncomfortable, just like the pandemic. It is uncomfortable, inconvenient. It is difficult, I know, physically, emotionally, spiritually. But you know what? One thing good about this, we pull our resources together. We think about others who are suffering. We mind now our neighbors who are in distress. We don't only care for our own welfare. We seem to reach out and extend help to others, no matter what. It's not any more material that they need, but only friendship, only a phone call away, only a mind and a thought that say, I have still my family and friends who will stand by me if I'm a victim of this virus, and I will always be taken care of, of these people who suffer just like what I am suffering right now. Third, God gives us abundant strength to bear our sufferings if we only ask Him. Sting and bitterness disappear if we bear our suffering patiently. And last, above all, every suffering is a share in the passion of the Lord. Our Lord teaches us today that the only way to achieve what we truly desire is to take up our cross for the sake of a higher cause, His cause. I've been repeating this every now and then. Carry your cross, take on the cause of Christ. Our Lord was ravaged on the cross but not defeated and from the tree of life an enduring and fulfilling life is made possible if we take up his cause and imitate him the alternative is our waged world the more we seek fleeting things the more we flee from our crosses the more we will suffer lasting misery because if we put our stock only in the things of this world they will sooner or later pass away let us ask the Lord, my dear brother, sister, today to help us see our crosses not as burdens, but as opportunities to help construct a better world in this name. Through our crosses in his service, we can achieve a better life for ourselves and others. Let's carry our cross and take up the cause of Christ. Please so stand. Let us profess our faith.
I believe in one God, the Father of my I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, his only Son, and Son of the Lord, present before the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by his Holy Spirit was internet of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and trust in God's goodness, let us bring our prayers and petitions before Him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for bishops and all clergy, that they may continue to model a spirit of unity and love as they shepherd the church, we pray to the Lord. That the recent peace accords in the Middle East provide lasting, substantive cooperation and understanding between our Jewish and Muslim brothers and sisters, we pray to the Lord. For all who've been affected by Hurricane Laura, those who died, were injured, or have lost their homes, may God ease their suffering and give them strength and touch the hearts of many to assist them, we pray to the Lord. For our community of resurrection, that the fire of the Holy Spirit will embolden us to give witness to God and to serve others by following the example of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the sick and dying among us, for those we serve through our parish ministries, and all who have asked for our prayers, that they may find comfort, peace, and strength in God, we pray to the Lord. We remember those who have died our loved ones who have gone before us, and those who mourn the loss of someone dear to them. Let us remember Aurora de Mesa Tabor, Francisco Fulgueras, Silvestri Lopez, Benjamin Cruz Jr., and Jose Aking B. Dioso, rest in peace, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Giver of all life, we ask you to sustain our life in the life of the world. Hear our cries for help. Make us generous as you are in answering those who turn to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 sisters and brothers are sacrificed, we accept to God, the Almighty Father.
May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right. right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to human his fallen states, and by suffering concealed out our sins. By his rising to the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by saying to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as it will end, we acclaim. <laughs> of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking the body and blood of Christ, we be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in mercy. Welcome them into the lights of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be your heirs in our life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, of glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass will offer that let's go in peace to love and serve one another, carry our crosses, and take on the cross of Christ. Yes, we are. Thank you.